RC time constant just stands for resistive capacitive network, meaning we take a resistor and a capacitor and hook them together. <coughs> the capacitor holds the charge, but the resistor is the one that controls either how long it's going to hold it or how long it takes to charge up. So the charging and discharging of the capacitor is controlled by the resistor in it. In fact, here we have a small circuit this is a 555 chip and you'll find those used in literally everything from TVs radios microwave toaster ovens anything 555 timers are used in almost everything around they're a neat little chip their one purpose, I shouldn't say their one purpose, but their main purpose in life is to just give us a nice little what looks like a clock wave. Something that counts, goes on and off, on and off. And anyway, we'll talk about this and, and in talking about it, I think I can show you a little more, or hope I can, on how resistors and capacitors work together to control this timing, this charging and discharging. Anyway, this, this little circuit here, uh, its whole function is that right here is an LED. That's that little red light that you see blinking on front of your VCR all the time or on a microwave ovens or whatever. That little red light that stays on and you see all over the house if the lights are out. Anyway, this whole circuit is just to get this guy to blink. So once we start this up, which is to put power to it, it's going to start, in fact, if I take an output out from that pin three, it's going to give a pulse. It's called a square wave. And it just goes on indefinitely. Just keeps on pulsing. Now the whole point of this is that we can do a lot of things with this. We can turn things on, off. Uh, we can use it to time out something. Uh, they can use it, they don't, but uh, like if you have a garage door opener, there's usually a light on it and it stays on for so many minutes or so many seconds and then it turns off so that you'll have light in the garage while you're in there. So that, that's kind of what we can use this for because it can be used to count. And the, this That's one complete pulse. In fact, it's one complete pulse can start anywhere. I'm taking it from the negative going here over to where it starts, just starts to go negative again, and that's one complete pulse. I could also have taken it from negative to negative over there or several points, but just pick a point, and when you go through that whole cycle, you've got one complete pulse. Out of this pulse, we have an on time and an off time. So when it goes negative, it's off, and when it goes positive, it's on. That's where, in fact, in this circuit, I have, yeah, just trying to think how to do this. Anyway, I have R, B here, resistor B, and capacitor 1. And that's what's controlling this pulse. By changing either one of them, I can change this so that my pulse is either quicker while I'm drawing this, you guys pretend like I'm drawing it even and correct. 
or I could stretch it out just by changing that resistance and capacitance because that is my charge and discharge. As it charges up, it holds the charge, then it discharges, and it just takes a while to charge back. It charges, it holds, it discharges, and it goes through this whole cycle. What we're going to do is we're going to put a little circuit like this on this guy so that hopefully you can see it and we'll vary it and show you what the different resistance and capacitive values can really do. How does it really change or what does it change? So we're, again, we're able to go from a, uh, well, a pulse train of, of some time to something much faster or something much slower. In fact, this can be down to several thousands per second or out to a minute or two minutes per uh, per pulse. So we, we've got a lot, lot of range that we can work with this. We can, again, we can build something that's going to turn on and off very quickly or we can build something that's going to stay on very long time. And they, again, they use this circuit uh, in almost everything I've seen because it's a nice cheap way to build a clock into something, a counting circuit, something we can depend on. If we change RB 10K to a higher value, would, would that make it uh, to increase, to expand, or, or, or decrease? It'll expand it. Actually, what, what I've got there, and I don't know how much you can see from that side of the room, but I've got basically a, a variable resistor in it. So I can change it all over the place. But yes, if I increase the resistance, I'm going to increase the time. If I decrease that, I'm going to decrease the time. Because that resistor acts, if you have a hose and you're watering the lawn, right? if you want it more water, you go turn on the tap, right? Well, that resistor works like that in that by opening the tap, you're decreasing the resistance, right? You're letting more water flow through. By closing it down, you're increasing the resistance or slowing the water down. And that's what the resistor does. So it gives you the ability, again, to change this. But we could also change C1 if we wish and accomplish the same thing. By putting a larger capacitor in, it would take longer for it to charge and consequently longer for it also to discharge at a given resistance value. It's just usually, it's a lot easier to change the value of the resistor than to change the value of the capacitor. Oh. R RA is uh, just a biasing resistor for the chip. These are the pin numbers, by the way. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. This is an eight pin chip, which means it's only half the size of a standard one. So. Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. My fault. Thank you. Pins being the legs on a chip. If you look at a chip, when you look at a chip on the board, right, one of the things they're going to tell you is that they need a certain, well, just as this, I need a resistor to go between pin six and seven. Well, how do you know which one is pin six and seven? And that's the question. So. If you look at most chips, there's a little horseshoe in one end of it. And let's see.
Yeah. Yeah. Here, pass that around. There's a little horseshoe in the end of it. Or there will be a dot. This will be pin number one, or leg one. And no matter how many pins there are, you count down this way and then back up the other side. So if this was a standard uh, 16 pin, this would be one to eight. This would be pin number nine and pin 16 up that side. Oh, this is from the top. All right. <clears throat> Forgot where it was. You'd ask a question. Oh, that one's just for biasing the this chip, meaning making sure the right voltage is there. Uh, there's a resistor here right next to the LED, and that's just to make sure you don't blow the LED out. So you said with the variable resistor, uh, you can control the uh, the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. A variable resistor, in fact, this is a variable resistor, or one type, right? Whenever you turn your radio on, you're adjusting a variable resistor. Because when you turn it on, it comes on low. And then as you turn, the, turn it on up, what you're doing is you're lowering the resistance, therefore letting more electrons through to the speaker, and therefore making a louder sound. So that's what you're adjusting is a variable resistor, or a pot. Lost my train of thought there someplace. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to set one up, and I'll show you, basically hope or hope to show you some of the uses, some of the ways you can apply this RC time constant. What does that do for you? Right. When you go from station to station. Uh, the older radios, not the new ones, because all the new ones are all push button and predetermined some other way. But when you turn the old, you know, the old dial, you used to turn that, that's what you were adjusting was a capacitor in there. And that actually varied the frequency that you were tuning into. So here again on, a, on, a, on the radios, you had both. You had the variable resistor for adjusting the the uh, speaker or the sound and the variable capacitor to adjust the uh, frequency you were tuning into. But yeah, as far as which one to change, it, there is no uh, real guideline. Either way, I'll get it get it to you. So, okay, where are we at? About eight thirty, seven thirty. Whoa. Okay. Why don't we then take a Five minute break. That'll give me a chance to get a oscilloscope and we'll hook a, an oscilloscope up to it so that you can actually see that pulse on a scope. Okay. Our 555 is working. We've got our scope hooked up so we can see it on the scope. And what we're seeing is this pulse train going. Uh, again, the, the scope though is fairly slow so you're not going to see the, the uh, vertical traces. All you'll see is the horizontals. But we can definitely change that. I'm going to have to trigger this off something else. But we can definitely change that by changing the resistance value. All right, let's, one more thing. As long as we're gonna do this. 
see if we can figure out what resistance we're on. By putting our meter across the resistor, No, it's going to auto range on me. Does the power have to be off? Well, that's, yeah, that's the problem. I was hoping I could get it to at least clamp on and show it half, but it's, yeah. Because we can always do that. See where we're at. Tell you what, we'll start at uh, well, that's 20k, 6k543. Well, there's about 3k. So at 3k, we have. Anyway, I'm not going to bother to get it all the way out. We've got that. If we go up to uh, it's just a little over 6K and it's stretched it out longer. So again, by changing the resistance, we can stretch this out each time. You t you t you're changing the time that it takes to charge again and discharge that capacitor by changing that resistance on it. The more resistance, the, more resistance, the longer it's going to take. Got a good idea anyway on RC time constant? Some understanding? See it? Again, RC time constant is just the amount of time, RC time constant, RC is equal to T, meaning R times C is going to give me that time, and that's all this is. If I take the resistance times the capacitor, it'll tell me how fast that's going to strobe, how fast it's going to flash. 